we're going to start talking about some different theories on acids and bases and how people define them in history. Okay, uh, The first theory that we, we got basically was from a guy named Arrhenius. And Arrhenius' theory focused in on the hydrogen and the hydroxides. So things that we can very easily distinguish for our acids and bases. Uh, this theory is still valid. It still encompasses everything. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the problem, the reason why we're going to have two more theories after this one, so there's actually three theories we'll be talking about, is that Arrhenius' theory is too narrow. So in his theory, all acids had to contain hydrogen. So they're hydrogen-containing compounds that can ionize to form H+. So you had to have hydrogen, and it has to be able to ionize, um, which is fine because all acids do this. So this is true. The problem is we have acids that are not this that exists. So we have things that are acidic that may not contain hydrogen that ionizes. So the definition is a little too narrow for what we want to use now and today. So it's a good definition. It's a great starting definition. Um, it's probably the definition if you've ever been taught this before in terms of middle school or just a general public's knowledge of an acid. They say acids contain hydrogen ions. That's where this is coming from. It's his original theory on this. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's just well, there's more out there than, there's, than these. Now, what's great that came out of his theory is he recognized the power of each hydrogen ion. So if you have something like hydrochloric acid, it only has a single hydrogen on it. We call that a monoprotic acid. So every time you dissolve an HCl in water, you get one H+, which basically is a one-to-one -one ratio. We also have diprotic and triprotic acids, where when you dissolve sulfuric acid in the water, you don't just get one H, you get two H pluses. Okay, so when this dissolves, you end up with two separate H plus ions floating around in solution. So in terms of concentration, it starts to change how we calculate concentration because we're going to get double the effect from this acid versus this acid. And then, of course, for the triprotic, you get triple the effect. So if you dissolve the same number of moles of this, this, and this, you actually would have three times the concentration of acid in your solution if you use phosphoric acid versus sulfuric versus hydrochloric. Um, now that's assuming they all dissolve and they all split apart 100%. We're going to find out in this unit that that doesn't always happen. So sometimes they're weak electrolytes and they don't 100% split apart. So we have to factor that into our equilibriums. Bases on Arrhenius' theory uh, basically said that they contain hydroxides. Okay, so anything with hydroxide, the OH- concentration, that's a base. But he limited it to that. So if it didn't contain hydroxide, according to his definition, it's not a base. Um, this is actually the bigger issue with the definition because we found many more bases that exist that are not hydroxide-containing compounds. Uh, one of the most popular, most common one is ammonia. So NH3, ammonia, the household cleaner that we use for Windex and those kind of things, all your ammonia-based cleaners, those are all bases. Um, and those are actually relatively strong bases that exist. So the problem was his definition, according to his definition, ammonia wouldn't be a base, but it acted just like all the other bases, had all the same properties, same pHs, everything. So it definitely is a base, so we needed a better definition. Okay, So Arrhenius is a great starting point. Um, it's a very simple definition. Acids make hydrogen ions. Bases make hydroxide ions. There's, it's never wrong. Um, these are always true. The problem is, is there are other things out there that you know, also are acids and bases that this definition would not include. So we want to expand this definition. So our next definition is the Bronsted and Lowry definition. Uh, Bronsted and Lowry took the idea of acids and they said instead of just saying that they ionize hydrogen, let's say that in a chemical reaction they can actually donate it to uh, another chemical. So in their definition, acids are hydrogen ion donors. Okay? Now if you recall, a hydrogen just has one proton and one electron in it. So if you have one proton, one electron, and you have a hydrogen ion, you get rid of the electron, what do you have left? Well, just a proton. So really, acids are proton donors. So if they accept protons in a chemical bond, sorry, if they donate um, protons for, to make a chemical bond, that's an acid. So hydrogen ion donors are acids. Well, if acids are the donors, 
the bases become the acceptors. Okay, so these get rid of them, these take them. So bases now are hydrogen ion acceptors um, or proton acceptors. The, the beauty of this theory is now we've opened up that definition of bases so they don't have to contain hydroxide. As long as they're able to accept a hydrogen ion, they now can be, can be considered um, a base. So let's take a look at this couple of reactions down here and talk about which things here are acids, what things here are bases. So if you look, we have NH3. And NH3 is reacting with water. And we're making NH4 plus and OH minus. So your NH3, going from here to here, it goes from NH3 to NH4 plus. So if you look at it, take a minute and, and process this. Did it accept a hydrogen ion to get from here to here? Or did it donate one? Okay, hopefully at home you are answering the fact that it accepted one because we have three hydrogens here, we have four hydrogens here with a positive charge. So this is from this point to here, it's gained a hydrogen ion. So if it's gained one, it's an acceptor. So we would call NH3, which is ammonia, a base. Water in this scenario starts off as H2O and it reacts to make OH. So water has, used to have two hydrogens, it now only has one, so it donated one of its hydrogens away. So in this reaction, we would call the ammonia the hydrogen ion acceptor and water the hydrogen ion donor. So water is the acid and ammonia is the base. So if you're jotting down the notes, um, this is your base, this is your acid. Now, cool thing about water is we can flip it on water. So in this scenario, we have HCl plus water. And the HCl um, changes to become chlorine or chloride ions only. So it had a hydrogen, and now it doesn't. So it has got rid of one, so it, it's a donor. So it donated its hydrogen away, so it's the acid, which makes sense because this is hydrochloric acid. So it, even by looking at it, you'd probably realize, yep, this is going to be the acid. But according to the theory, it also shows that. So hydrochloric acid, or HCl, donates a hydrogen ion to become chloride ions in solution. Or the water now does exact opposite of than what it did up here. So the water in this reaction actually accepts the hydrogen ion and becomes H3O+, which we call the hydronium ion. So water is the acceptor here. So in this case, water is our base, and hydrochloric acid is our donor. So if we look at these two reactions, we have, an acid, we have a base plus an acid, and here we have an acid plus a base. So water can act as both an acid and a base in chemistry. Um, it actually has the ability to do both, which is kind of a unique property of water also. Okay?